everybody from Nashville, Tennessee. I mean, you know, we gotta we gotta go all around, even the shitholes. And uh, speaking of shitholes, here comes a proud ball fart employee, getting out his cum rag, showing it off, never giving up. Still has not given Draz a rematch. Draz still feels that he's been screwed. That he could have tied that that uh, that match. That it could have gone into sudden death. That he could have won against Captain. Um, had he not been screwed out of that extra 10 seconds. But Captain can't run for long. As Draz might get a piece of him at our pay-per-view in a couple weeks. No Man's Land. No Man's Land, by the way, will contain a battle royal with, I believe, 30 Let's Cause the Wrestling League wrestlers. The winner of that battle royal will get a guaranteed title shot at the Let's Cause the Wrestling League Championship. That's a couple weeks from now. Right now, we have a interesting starting match. You see those tables on the outside of the ring. And that's because this is a tables match. The first person to put someone else through a table will win. So it's a free-for-all match, too. It's four men. Anonymous Jerk Bag, one of those four men making his way out to ring right now. And the winner of this match will actually get a shot next week at the Hardcore Championship. So either Cat or Draven, whoever walks away tonight, uh during our main event as the hardcore champion will fight one of these four men for that title so none of these four men I don't believe Let's, let me look at the list again real quick no none of these men have actually held any kind of gold so this is a this is a chance for all of them but fabulous being the closest man in this match to have won uh any kind of gold, but was unable to do it from Baza, who is also in uh, competition tonight against Brute Force later on. Let's see if he can continue slaying giants or not. One of these men's gonna be picking uh, table splinters out their butthole by the end of tonight, by the end of this match, rather. Now coming out to ringside, pimping his way all, all across Tennessee. I must be having a migraine. I can't fucking talk for shit tonight. Pimping his way all the way across fucking Tennessee. He is Benny. That's pretty good, right? That's a good one. That's pretty good. Benny, of course, wearing his trademark pimp hat. Uh, I believe he plucked those out of Nil's ass. I don't know. It's kind of other than the blue, though. Blue is really Nil's color. Nil's also fighting tonight. I think he's in the next match. Yeah, against the Iron Dogs. What a, what a, what a night we have for you tonight. We've got, we've got a tables match to start with. We've got some tag matches. we got a hardcore championship match. But then again, ever since a hardcore championship had uh, been created for the Let's Cause Wrestling League, we will have a hardcore championship match every event. That's just part of the title. If you want to hold that title, you got to work hard. And you got to take a few uh, shots to the face. Ugh. But that's just the way it is. I, I, I'm really just trying to fill air. I have nothing to say over these fucking entrances. And it's going to be even harder because it looks like Hood Fabulous' music doesn't work. Thanks. Homeless Joe not wrestling tonight. Uh, instead, definitely, uh, definitely doing sound. So, you know, there you go. That's a thing. Crowd. Pretty pumped up though, but I have a feeling that because the sound's fucked up now, that when this match actually starts, the crowd will be dead silent. Which is very disappointing considering this is a tables match, so it should be pretty exciting. I mean, it's no disqualifications, right? You can, just because there's tables doesn't mean you only have to use tables. Captain, who is pushing a table around outside right now, can go get a chair and beat the hell out of Hood Fabulous with it, and it's totally legal. Oh, there we go, there's his music. Just in time for the end of his entrance. Way to go. Isn't that amazing? And, yep, deafening silence. Deafening, I, it's like, it's like I know how things fucking run around here. It's ridiculous. Anyway, we are off. 
But Fabulous going after Benny, Captain going after an honest trick bag and actually knocking over a table. Now, one thing I'm not clear about uh, the rules, I don't know if the announce table counts as a table. I know that doesn't sound... Oh, that's a... It's full of asshole that uh, Fabulous just got there. Anyway, I don't know if the announce table counts. I think it has to be one of those shitty folding tables, but I'm not sure. We've never... We, maybe we'll find out this match if someone gets put through the announce table and uh, if the match ends, the referee, who's somewhere, possibly in the crowd, um, will probably decide. Uh, as he does not have to be in the ring, considering this is not a... You know, pinfall or, or anything like that. And here we go. Hood Fabulous has grabbed a chair and he smacks Benny with it. Oh, he misses the second time, though. Benny wrestling the chair away from Hood Fabulous. The chair falling to the floor. Now Benny grabbing Hood Fabulous and throwing him into the uh, into the ring. Meanwhile, Anonymous is beating the shit out of Capazium in the corner there. Nobody's anywhere close to the table at the moment. And this is just a brawl on the outside between all four men. Of course, they are paired up, but there's not a lot of wrestling going on. A lot of punching, a lot of swinging. Oh, look, Captain's actually doing a wrestling move, and oh, it looked like he was going to throw uh, Anonymous on that on those uh, steps, but, you know, physics are very weird here in the Let's Cross the Wrestling League. We've seen people get pulled into uh, a miniature black hole before, uh, and we've definitely seen people kind of levitate and scoot around. Um, not sure why, not sure if the arena's in some weird, you know, Abyss of space time. Maybe some dark matter is around or some antimatter. Anyway, Captain ZM, talk about antimatter. The only thing that weighs more than antimatter are our steel stairs, which are now in the middle of the ring. Very dangerous for all competitors involved. Anonymous not allowing uh, Captain ZM to really use this. And oh, Benny goes head first into the post. Anonymous looks like he's going to go. He might be going for the uh, five star frog splash from the top rope here. Oh no. Oh no, he actually did some like weird flippy splash thing. Leveling captain. Meanwhile, Benny is thrown straight into that post again. His head bouncing off like a like a watermelon or something. I don't I don't know what the fuck. Oh, again, even. And now actually, uh, anonymous grabbing the chair finally. Uh, or table. Oh, for fuck's sake! Now they're gonna play this game, aren't they? No, nope, captain actually throwing the table in the ring, refusing to play the pass the table back and forth game. Very commendable by captain. like uh, no one's going for the announce table so I'm gonna guess that it is off limits or at least no one cares to use it for a table uh, to end this match uh, oh here we go are we gonna keep passing it off here oh no uh, anonymous oh actually hitting Benny with the table ignoring Capizium now captain's got him in a Cobra clutch into a Russian leg sweep actually uh oh now it's now it's a game of who's gonna get put through that table first as everyone seems to be eyeballing it. Uh-oh, Captain, no. I thought Captain was going to throw Anonymous into the table, but he did not. The crowd actually standing up, getting ready to see anything interesting happen. Benny. Doing his uh, little mockery, but it ends up working. Benny and Hood Fabulous actually probably would make a pretty good tag team. They're both very dirty fighters. Uh, both from the streets. And they both wear white pants. So, might be a good tag team. Maybe they should consider that. Oh, Hood Fabulous almost putting Benny through the table. Table not breaking. It must have been made in Japan. It is the table. Uh-oh. Maybe I spoke too soon about the announce table because it looks like Anonymous is getting it ready to put someone through. So, Benny may not uh, be ready for that. We'll see. Uh-oh, Anonymous grabbing Benny. Taking him over to the announce... Oh, wait. Oh, no see do Takes him over to the announce table, but not really. Benny doing a dance and not making a lot of love. Uh-oh. Oh, uh -oh. oh and the Fabulous wins! The Fabulous put Captain ZM through a table with a drop kick. The table falling on Captain ZM's face. And there you have it. Hood Fabulous getting another title shot, this time for the hardcore title next week. So either Cad or Draven will have to defend that title against Hood Fabulous. They haven't won many, um, strike that. They haven't won any of their tag team matches. Draz still has not won a singles match in Let's Cross Wrestling. Again, as I explained before, he was kind of screwed over during the Iron Man match with Captain ZM in our last pay-per-view. Uh, and he does want that rematch with Captain. Captain 
avoiding him at all costs. This captain, you know, he lucked out. The referee slipped up. Some people said maybe he was paid off. Maybe even by Draz, because Draz seems to take this to have some sort of pride in this losing streak. Um, Neil, though, doesn't seem to mind, even though uh, it could be causing him to lose every tag match they've ever been in together. But these two started as uh, employer and employee, and I think a friendship has actually sparked from their business arrangement. I could be reading too much into this, though. Neil could actually detest Draz, but he's already paid for him, so, you know. Buyer's remorse may be there, but the money's already gone. The money's already been used. What are you going to do? Now coming out to ringside, they are the tag team champions, and this is a non-title match. They are the Iron Dogs, and there's Cat actually wearing his hardcore championship that he won last week. And there's our tag team champions. All members of the Iron Dogs are currently champions. This is the first time we've seen them all come to the ring donning gold. Maybe the last time we see them all donning go gold. Especially after the match tonight, the cat has against Draven. But hey, at least it happened, right? The Iron Dogs, the most dominant group in the Let's Crosby Wrestling League. Definitely the most dominant tag team in the Let's Crosby Wrestling League. And they'll be fighting the least dominant tag team in the Let's Crosby Wrestling League right now. And of course, just standing at ringside, he has a match later tonight. He's not actually part of the Tag Team Champions, but he is part of the Iron Dogs nonetheless. Neil getting uh, beat down beginning this match by Overlord, but again, we've seen people get an uh, advantage early and lose anyway. Everything is pretty unpredictable in the Let's Cause Wrestling League. Neil now taking back control, hitting Overlord with a Hurricane Rana, then kicking at the shoulder. Neil turns over Overlord, going for the arm, it looks like. Overlord needs to probably make a tag already. He's going to uh, keep taking this much punishment from Nil. Like I said, just because someone's on top doesn't mean they'll stay on top for long. Let's cause the wrestling league is a fickle place. And I didn't mean fecal. And oh, there we go. There's a reversal of a Hurricane Rana. Neil gets reversed on that quite often, actually. Oh, and then a headbutt right to the dick. The referee, full view of that, does not seem to care. Overlord now working over the knee of Neil. Neil's knee, if you will. Tries to lift him up, but Neil is able to power out. And it looks like he's going to go for attack. No. Yeah, yes, he is tagging in Draz. Was that a smart decision? Not sure yet. We'll find out. I mean, the, the team of uh, Pretty Stupid have actually had some impressive matches as of late. Um, they are, of course, the underdogs in this match up against the tag team champions. And uh, Nil, I mean, I'm sorry, Draz never having won a match certainly does not add uh, any kind of hope for Pretty Stupid to win anytime soon. But again, we've seen stranger things than Let's Cross the Wrestling League. Right now we're seeing, oh, there's that kick! Already, Overlord hitting that spin kick. That's one of his signature moves. I could have knocked Draz out. He's he's finished matches with that kick before. He's gonna go for the pin. One, two, no, Draz able to kick out after two. Nail had uh, some confidence in Draz, not coming in and trying to break that up. Looked like uh, Overlord was gonna go for an eye rake there, but was able to was unable to successfully hit. And uh-oh, I think Draz might be getting set up. Yep, here it goes. Now, this is a finisher we've seen many times before from the Iron Dogs. They've won tag team championships with this. Nils screaming, but can't do anything about it. Draz hit with all force of that. Going for the pin. Nil, the referee's not paying attention, and it gave Nil enough time to get in and uh, make a break there. Overlord doesn't care that Nil has gotten out of the ring. He gave him a little bit of a slap there. Uh-oh, I think they're going to fight on the outside here. Oh, looks like Overlord, well... 
Oh, Nil, maybe? Oh, I don't know. Nil's giving chase. I don't think Overlord sees him. And Okay, they've given up. All right, cool. Whatever. I guess they're not going to fight on the outside anyway. Exclamation. Picking up where he left off. Uh, or picking up where the Iron Dogs just left off with Nil. And going to the top rope. I'm not sure what he's doing. He's just gone to the middle rope, I should say, for two, two ways. Letting Draz kind of crawl around. I don't know if he's just toying with Draz. But it's a dangerous game. I mean, I know that Nil and Draz not the best tag team. In fact, they are the worst tag team in the Les Crosby Wrestling League. Um, still, though, you don't want to underestimate your opponents. Now, oh, it looks like... Ah, there's the scissors kick. That could be it. Draz has gotten the shit beat out of him by both members of the Iron Dogs. I think two signatures, a tag team finisher. Now another pin. One, two... No, not able to actually, uh, Draz is actually able to kick out. Neil taking a bulldog there for his troubles in coming in and trying to uh, save his partner. Overlord kind of staring down at Neil, and I don't know if they're going to fight or not. Either way, Draz throwing in the corner. Looks like Overlord, or exclamation, maybe expecting Overlord to be there because usually they'd be going for a uh, finish. Oh, no. Oh, we've seen this before. Exclamation has done this to people before, and he's had it done to him before, and I don't think Draz is going to get out of it. Shit, oh dear! Shit, Draz is... Draz is not going to get over his injury anytime soon. Being beaten down like this, this match. Both members of the Iron Dogs, with Cad watching on. Beating the shit out of Draz on the outside. Nil, nowhere to be found. Draz punched so hard he fell up against the table. Exclamation getting up into the ring. Overlord grabbing Nil. Or, sorry, grabbing Draz and throwing him in. Iron Dog's not satisfied with a count out. Exclamation going up to that middle rope again for some reason. And getting back down. Draz now able to make a tag back into his partner, Nil. Nil. Uh, escorting exclamation around the ring there for a bit. Irish whipping exclamation. Missing whatever he went for there. But reverses. Kicks exclamation in the back of the knee and hits a back body drop. Pretty square on exclamation. Turns exclamation over here. This goes for a punch to the uh, kidneys a bit. And another kick. Exclamation unable to get up. Nail definitely the... Uh, is he going to pin? Why would he tag Draz in? Draz was not even... He was still recuperating. Why the fuck would he tag Draz in? But then again, Draz looks like he's doing something here. Oh, okay. Nil tagged himself back in. Interesting teamwork. It's working, though. As, uh... Exclamation's isolated away from his tag team partner. Over in the corner of Pretty Stupid. Exclamation, one of the higher rated men in the Let's Cause Wrestling League. I think only surpassed by Grubbins because Grubbins has yet to lose a match and that might change tonight. We'll have to see later, but... Uh-oh. Neil going to the top rope. Might be going for his finisher. Um, I don't know if that's his finisher. It's a leg drop from the top rope. I'm not I'm not sure. I can't remember what the fuck Neil's finisher is. I can't fucking remember. Anyway... Nail hitting a uh, bridge suplex. Actually, I don't know what the final thing that's called. That's a Northern Light suplex. Isn't it a Northern Light suplex? I don't remember. Anyway, oh shit! Enziguri! Exclamation's down. He might be out. Could this be the greatest upset win in Let's Cross the Wrestling League history? One, two, no! Exclamation able to kick out at two. Nail, oh, going for a knee, missing horribly. Exclamation needs to make a tag. Instead, he grabs Nil in the dick and slams him across his knee with a backbreaker. Yeah, I think exclamations, I mean... Yeah, I think he's going to set him up for that finisher again. There we go. They did this to Nil already. Now they're going to do it to... Uh, they did this to Draz already. Now they're going to do it to Nil. Oh, they're setting him up. He's fucked. He just got Iron Dog, motherfucker. Overlord going for the pin, but Draz can get in and make the make the, make the the save here. But no, I don't think so. He's too slow. Two and three. That is it. The Iron Dogs predictably beat pretty stupid in this match. 
Draz still not having a victory to his name. And neither does the team of Pretty Stupid. There was that kick. I thought that could have ended it early on uh, in this match. Draz, uh, I can't remember if he kicked out of this or if Neil got it. No, I think he kicked out because Neil didn't even come in. And then right here, there's that scissors kick on Draz. See, Draz was just getting his ass beat in the majority of this match. Which, I mean, that's what he's paid to do, right? Nil, Nil pays him to protect. If he doesn't pay him to win, he certainly pays him to protect, and uh, Draz actually kicking out at that time. I think this was, uh, yep, this is where Nil was setting up that Inziguri, and he hit exclamation with the exclamation was taking a beating towards the end of the match there. But it was not enough for Pretty Stupid. Um, again, because Draz, he's injured. He's been injured for a couple weeks now, and he's not been able to recover. And here it was right here. This was this, this was the finisher for the Iron Dogs. Draz not able to even help, and that was it right there. Overlord makes the pin. Draz is slow to get in the ring because he is injured. They have exclamation of time to get over there, get him with a Bulldog. And the Iron Dogs pick up another victory. Here on Let's Cause the Wrestling League Friday night. And now it is time for the Tag Team Championship number one contender match. Last week, beating Full Foreign Glory, the Fallen earned the opportunity here to go against the 1% for the number one contendership for the tag titles. That match, of course, will take place at no man's land in a couple weeks and the 1% have their hands full. these guys the, the fallen are former tag team champions the only tag team tag team to beat the iron dogs for the tag team championship they did lose uh, in the iron dogs rematch clause which by the way I don't think I ever mentioned this I know I'm talking about a different different title now the uh, hardcore championship the rematch clause does not exist for the Hardcore Championship due to the fact that it is defended every week. Another little special thing about the title. And speaking of special things, there's two special things right here. Lord Grubbins, Space Tomato, the 1%. These two, undefeated as a tag team, Grubbins, as a result, he's had one singles competition when he first came to Let's Rise Wrestling League, but the next week debuting with Space Tomato as the 1%. Lord Grubbins, the only undefeated wrestler in the Let's Cause Wrestling League. And some would argue this is the first challenge that this team will have had. Now, their egos certainly bloated, and they could uh, be vastly underestimating the Fallen. The Fallen, again, like I said, a very capable tag team. And and I don't mean to shit on the 1%'s parade here. I'm not saying that they're not talented wrestlers either. I'm just saying we haven't had to see it yet. Every match they've had has either been a handicap match that they've somehow managed to have booked or has been against Pretty Stupid. But undoubtedly, they will say that they have fought from the ground up, that they have paid their dues, and that they shouldn't even have to have this match for number one contendership. They consider themselves the number one contenders for the tag titles, and they will have to prove it here against the Fallen. Right here, right now, let's get this shit started. Tomato and Gara starting this right up. Gara throwing in some punches and some kicks. Tomato hasn't been beaten like this for Weeks now. As like I said, he's not had a real challenge. And Gara challenging Tomato pretty well right this moment. Some have been waiting for a match like this to see the 1% get their comeuppets. Comeuppets? Like Jim Henson's comeuppets? Come up and comeuppets. Comeuppets? Comeuppets. To get their get their jollies off. I don't fucking know. People want to see the 1% get their asses kicked. And hopefully that's what we're going to see here tonight. I know I'm supposed to be partial, but fuck the 1%. I got to say it right here, right now. And I, I'm secretly rooting for the Fallen. Because if the Fallen do not win, the 1% will actually have a chance to win the Tag Team Championship. 
And can you imagine the egos they'll have then as champions? Either way, Gara back in control of this match after a brief rest as he was being beaten by Space Tomato. Space Tomato, though, reversing Gara. And now illegally choking him against the mat. The referee, of course, letting it go as the referee lets just about everything go. Space Tomato. Wrenching the neck back. Trying to make Gara give up, but as we've seen so many times in Let's Cross the Wrestling League, no one ever taps out. Gara reversing into a masterful DDT. Right there, and it looks like he might be tagging his partner Canopel here. Canopel getting in the ring. Sending Tomato to the ropes. Oh, it looked like he was gonna go for like a shoulder or a uh, clothesline, but was unable to execute it, but still got back on top. Picking Tomato up with pretty relative ease, which is unbelievable by any standards. Noble being possibly the power, but behind the falling. Uh, Gara, though, not a small guy himself, though. Probably more of the technique. Noble, a little bit larger and a little bit beefier. Not too much smaller than Tomato, really. And holy shit! Two headbutts! Oh, and a big giant headbutt! Going for a pin right now. One of the rare times the 1% has ever been pinned. And oh shit, almost got it right there. That was a cunt hair away. Mando getting kicked in the back of the head by Knopel. And spun around. Knopel picking up Face Tomato. Throwing him into the corner. Throwing him back to the corner again. Look like going for a German suplex, and he hits all of it. Tomato's not been able to uh, capitalize for quite some time now. And just as I say that, he was able to reverse. He needs to tag in his partner, and yeah, he's going over to Grubbins, tagging Grubbins in. Grubbins, 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 fresh man, picks up Knopel, hits him with a uh, backbreaker there, and then stomps on his dick. Another stomp to the dick. Referee still not doing anything. Picks Canopel up. Looks like going for a scoop slam, but no, Canopel able to reverse, kicking the knee. What he's gonna go for here. He's got him held up, pulling him towards the center of the ring. And it looks like going for a back body drop, and he hits all of it. Canopel opting not to uh, tag his partner. And is, oh, looks like he's just gonna deadlift. Rubbins throws him up and slams him down. What strength Canopel has shown in this match so far. Definitely the powerhouse and the headbutt house of the Fallen. And now it looks like going over, possibly tagging in Gara. Yes, Gara is coming in. Gara, one of the few people who have actually beaten Brute Force. Um, I say this just about every week. He had a chance to become the champion. The Let's Cause Wrestling Champion, but opted out so that he could uh, fight in the tag title match and actually did win that match. So he became a champion, just not the Let's Crosby champion. So it worked out for him. There's nothing, no guarantee that he would have won against uh, Brute Force. Anyway, right now, he's certainly not going to win against 1% if he keeps getting beaten like this. And looks like uh, Grubbins putting on a clinic here, going for a pin. The referee actually pretty slow to pin. Gets a two. No, not enough. Gara able to kick out just in time. All right, getting kicked by Grubbins. Grubbins certainly showing that he is the the better wrestler, at least this match of the 1%. And I think it might be due to speed. He's able to get in there quickly as he is a smaller competitor. And oh, nope. A little bit too quick for his own good there as Gara outsmarts him. Gara, uh oh, he looked like he was going for that brain buster. But was unable to execute as it was reversed. Tomato now getting in. I was going to say the Fallen's advantage over Tomato anyway is they are quicker than Tomato, but I think Grubbins might be quicker than the Fallen. And it seems like, although Super Heavyweight seem to dominate the Let's Cross the Wrestling League, speed has come in uh, quite often, especially when you when you consider... Double DDT! When Oh, that fucking foot of Space Space. When you consider um, the fact that Baz has beaten just about every giant there is. One, two... Oh, almost. Almost got it. And Cad won the uh, Hardcore Championship from Skyrim Jobs last week. Um, 
who uh, it actually is still recuperating from falling on that sledgehammer last week. But just because there's a super heavyweight doesn't mean they're uh, going to win by by weight class alone, and we've seen that many times. And wow, holy shit, Knopel. Knopel actually able to hold Tomato up there for a while, but Tomato throwing in elbows and able to get out of whatever the hell that fireman's carry was going to turn into. Tomato throwing Knopel hard against the corner there, lifting Knopel up and hitting him right across the knee with a backbreaker. Face Tomato. Went for something there. Now going to tag back in Grubbins. Both teams showing that they do have some expertise. The 1% have not just been a uh, pushover. I would still say the Fallen possibly have had... I don't even know if they've had more offense. I think this has been a pretty even match. Grubbins has been kind of the MVP for his... Oh! There's the... There's the thumb! The thumb of doom! That could be it! Grubbins could be out of it! One! Two! No, Grubbins kicking out. I don't know why Tomato didn't get in and try to break the pin there. That move has finished matches before, I think. I'm not 100% sure. But it's certainly a move. Grubbins, it looks like Knobel waiting for Grubbins just to punch him. And, well, Grubbins is obliged. I was going to say that uh, Knobel's kind of been the MVP of his team this match. Grubbins, the MVP, MVP of his. Uh-oh. There's that spine buster. That, too, has ended matches. And I know that for sure. This could be it. One, two, no. And again, Fallen not, uh, or rather Gara not uh, trying to break that pin either. Now Grubbins kind of staring at Knopel. Unsure what he has to do. Knopel grabbing Grubbins, throwing him into the corner. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think it's time for the Doomsday device. Yes, all of it is hit. That could be all she wrote. Tomato, though, getting in the ring quickly to break that. He saw that that was going to be... That could have been it right there for Grubbins. That could have been it for their number one contendership. Knopel getting out of the ring. Oh, I thought he was going to go after Tomato. No, never mind. Anyway, Gara going after the knee on Grubbins. Grubbins lifted up. Thrown into the corner here. Hey, what the... Uh, what Gara has in store for him. Oh, looks like he's gonna go for that reverse suplex from the top rope. No, he hits all of it. That could be all. Grubbins could be out. Going for a pin here. One. No. Tomato was able to uh, break that. Grubbins, though. Hitting on the, uh, the hard end of the beaten stick and... Knobel just grabbed Space Tomato and suplexed him into the fucking ring like he was an infant. Grubbins fighting back finally against Kno uh, against Gara. Space Tomato trying to get out of the ring. It looks like uh, Grubbins might be going for that DDT through the ropes here. Yep. And he hits it. The crowd. Accurately chanting this is awesome as this match is better than I would have dreamed it. I didn't think that the 1% were going to put up this much of a fight. One has to wonder why they bothered for so many weeks rigging the system if they actually had all this skill to begin with. Maybe they just needed the confidence boost. I have no idea. Space Tomato wanting in now that a lot of the dirty work has been done by Grubbins. All right, getting back into the ring here. Tomato throwing in some haymakers. And a knee to the face. And a very strong clothesline. Looks like the uh, side of Tomato we haven't seen them uh, much of in the past. One of offense. I'm starting to worry about the chances that the Fallen have now. With uh, this sudden surge of... I was saying offense from 1%. One, two, no, I don't think a, a knee breaker there is going to do it, though. That could have been it. Uh, Knopel is unable to get it over there as uh, Rubbins got in there. And, oh, it looks like Gar reversing and Knopel being pulled down to the uh, from the ring. But back in the ring, Tomato now back on offense. Misses a punch there, but does not miss a kick. 
Bagara able to grab Tomato quicker. Grabs Tomato, hits him with a spinning uh, clothesline there. And uh oh, I think he's asking the Aztec gods above. And they said, go ahead and tag in Canopal. And Canopal said, okay. Canopal. Uh uh, stopping that kick from Space Tomato, hits him with a belly to belly suplex. Pulls Space Tomato to the center ring. Might be going for a pin. Yeah, actually goes for a pin here. One. No, only a one count. Zagara is actually a little bit tired. Nopal throwing his big, beautiful bald head right into the back of Space Tomatoes. Very hairy head. And now going for the arms. Space Tomato. Getting hit with an Enziguri. Very nicely executed Enziguri. Now a few stomps for his trouble. Face Tomato on Dream Street here and takes a chop to the chest. But doesn't phase him too much as he's able to get hold of uh, Canopal, put him in the corner, and it looks like the 1% is going to double team. Uh-oh! The 1% rule! That could be it! Er oh, he's taunting too much! Too much taunting! He should go for a pin, but now he's just staring at Canopal. Now Canopal able to get up. I don't know what the fuck Grubbins was thinking there. They hit the 1% rule, and instead of going immediately for a pin, he taunted Canopal, and now is just watching him. What the fuck? Are they going to do another one? Oh, don't tell me they're going to do another one here. Oh, he tossed... Oh, he tried to get Canopal in the corner, but Canopal would not go. And now Canopal fighting back. Away from Grubbins. Grubbins, though, throwing in a quick punch. Another quick punch. Canopal's days there. And another back body drop. Goes for a quick pin. Gara not getting in. One, two. No, Canopal able to kick out. And he misses the knee. Shades of nil in the last match. Canopal kicking Grubbins here. But unable to get anything going as Grubbins able to reverse and put Canopal back down. Canopal's got to be hurting here. Not sure what uh, Grubbins is doing. But either way, he did get a punch off. Was able to grab Knopel. Knopel and Grubbins wrestling a little bit in the middle of the ring. Knopel coming out on top with a throwing back by drop. He needs a tag in Gara right away. Yes, he does. Gara has not. Uh, has got to be a little bit more fresh. He hasn't been in the in the match for a while here, and he it's a pretty big haymaker on Grubbins. Uh oh. And throws Grubbins right across the top rope. All right, gets out of the ring and back in the ring. I'm not not sure what that was about. Perhaps he rethought something. Didn't work out for him because now Grubbins hits uh, Gara with a Russian leg sweep there, and now goes for a pin. Tomato a lot quicker to get into the ring. One, two. Oh wow, I thought that could have been it. Seems like the Fallen might be a little bit more hurt than uh, the one percent as the last couple of pin breaks. Or at least pins, I should say. Tomato has sprinted across the ring, whereas the members of the Fallen have been barely able to get in. The Fallen definitely have had the, a toll taken. And, oh, there's that spine buster. That could be it. Robin's trying to drag Gara over, and uh, Nopal needs to get in. One, two, no. Somehow Gara kicking out. Uh, but yeah, I think the time is Times aren't looking good for the fall in here and oh Gara could have capitalized there, but Grubbins Able to get back on it. Uh Oh Going for a uh, interesting pile driver there. Holy shit Gara's out cold Gara's fucking out cold if Canopal can't break this pin I don't think Gara is gonna kick out and base made a right in there again one two no, Gara actually kicking out. <coughs> How the hell is Gara kicking out of all these? 1% controlling this match without much effort at this point. The Fallen look like, I don't know if they're both injured or something, but they're not their uh, usual selves here. What's going on here? 
Nope, I thought he was gonna go for something. And Gara is staring at him. Yeah, I, I, I think maybe Gara's concussed or something. I have no idea. Gara has not even tried to do any offense, but does get a boot in there. And a huge punch slapping. Robins to the ground and now desperately making that tag. Or not desperately. I don't know what the fuck. And oh, there's the uh, Canopal wheel right there. He likes doing that cartwheel for some reason. And he punches Grubbins in the back of the head. Grubbins could have made a tag there, but didn't. Now Canopal. Oh! Busting! Uh, busting Grubbins open, I believe. Oh, but Grubbins fighting back. This is the first time Grubbins, I think, has ever seen his own blood. At least in the Let's Crossy Wrestling ring. 1% definitely been, uh, been tested. This match, and oh, going for a pin here. The referee was out of position though. One, two, no, Knopel able to kick out. Basically, was really on his game here tonight when it comes to uh, rushing into the ring to prevent any kind of a save. And uh oh, there's the thumb. That could be it. He needs to make a pin. Space Tomato doesn't even see. One, two, no. Oh, that could have been. That could have been it for. For the fall and the fallen could have won it right there but grubbin's actually able to kick out and it was a good time to do it because space tomato was distracted with gara on the outside didn't even see it until it was almost too late and then grubbin's was able to kick out though and now grubbin's back in control grubbin's finally tagging space tomato back in space tomato like i said has, has shown that he's uh, up oh, now he's doing his trump salute here Nopal trying to get over to his corner and tag. He just needs to reach up. He, oh, he could have tagged in Gara there, but was unable to reach. I don't know if he just wasn't aware of his surroundings or what. It seemed like it though he was crawling to his corner, but just was unable to get it done. Base tomato hitting a big splash and now a snake eyes going off the ropes and hits a big boot. Now off the ropes again, a big leg drop. Nopal looks like he's out of it. Basically, might be setting him up for a choke slam here. Yep, he got him. Up and down. That could be it. Grubbins able to get over one, two. No. Noble kicks out of a choke slam, and I think Gar has been busted open by a DDT. So both Grubbins and Gara have a crimson mask. Now Knopel lifting Space Tomato. Uh oh. Oh, we saw this last match from Exclamation. Space Tomato is about to get a one-way ticket down to the fucking floor. Jesus! Why is the crowd chanting that they are awesome? They ain't do shit. Holy fuck, Tomato's got his back's got to be broken. Oh. So Canopel's tired. Uh oh, looks like Grubbins might get involved here. But Gar is coming over. Both. Men kind of watching, not getting involved. Watching their tag team. Oh, there it goes. There it goes Grubbins. Gara, for some reason, not helping his partner here. Just staring. I'm not sure what's going on. What are we up to? Up to a six count. Nopal needs to shake it off and get back in. It looks like he is. He looks tired. Nopal looks out of it. <clears throat> I'm not sure what, it, how much he has left. Oh, not much after a scoop slam like that. Holy shit. Tomato, oh, no, getting reversed and put into the corner here. What's going on here? Oh, well, that's an interesting move, I suppose. Not sure what that was about. By the way, it seemed to be pretty effective, and he threw Tomato across the ring and makes a tag, but Gara's not much more fresh than Canopal. Both members of the Fallen have fallen quite a bit this match. And, uh, uh oh. Uh oh. Is this the 1% rule again? Oh no, different, different. Looks like a different uh, double team just going for the arm. All right, oh, now adjusting his tights for some reason. Gar right, throwing it into the corner here. Uh oh. Going up to the top rope. What could Grubbins be going for? Nothing, because he gets elbowed in the face. Gar right, hitting a front drop kick. Holy shit! What a drop kick! Grabs Grubbins. Oh, it looked like he was going to put him in this. Get him over in the corner, but no elbow. What? Kicks Grubbins. What's he going to do here? Uh-oh. 
snap suplex. I thought, oh, and that was going for a pin, actually. Canopel trying to get in. One, two. No, Canopel actually able to get across, and Grumman is able to kick out. Tomato thrown out of the ring. What's going on here? Looked like a scoop slam, but Gar unable to get it fully. And now is getting another back body drop. Grumman says really enjoying the back body drops. Looks like Knopel was trying to get in the ring. The referee stopped him. And another spine buster. That could be all she wrote here. Knopel needs to get in the ring and break this up. One, two. No, actually, Gar able to kick out. Basement grabs Knopel. Rose Knopel will clear out of the ring. Now, might be following suit. I don't know. Just might be just getting out of the ring. Yeah, just getting out of the ring. Rubbing his head. Looks like Space Tomato. Not feeling all of it. Gara reversing it. Hitting a spinning forearm on Grubbins. What a fucking match we've had so far. Goes for a pin, but one, two. No, not enough. And Space Tomato, well, Space Tomato was able to break it. I don't know if it was enough or not. Is, uh, but Space Tomato goes out of the ring now. That's what I do know. Grubbins, another back body drop. But he hurts himself on it, actually. It looks like he hit his head when he did that back body drop. Grubbins is down and out. Gar is down and out. Does not have a tag team partner in that corner. Look, I think that, I think Knopel and Tomato are fighting on the outside here. Uh-oh. Here goes the pedigree. And he hits it. Oh. Get in there, Knopel. That could be it. One, two, three. That's it. Knopel was unable to get in the ring in time. The 1% actually win, and they are the number one contenders for the tag titles. They will fight the Iron Dogs at No Man's Land for the Let's Cause Wrestling Tag Team Championships. I just think the Fallen were too beaten down. Uh, by the end of the match. And one one pedigree was enough to finish it off at the end. From Grubbins to Gara. There were quite a few opportunities for both teams to finish this. And it just happened to be the 1%. Neither team was a slouch this match. I know I said some bad things about the 1%, but they certainly earned this number one contendership uh, spot. Both teams gave up their all. Both teams were bloodied. Right here, Gara didn't have a partner. That would have helped him a lot. And uh, Rebels was able to take advantage. See, Gar uh, Knopel was up, but he just could have, I don't know. He just, he, he was so slow to get in. And he just wasn't wasn't fast enough, and that was it. The one percent number one contenders. And just as we've had two back-to-back -back tag team matches, we could be seeing the beginning of an end for one of the tag teams in the Let's Cross Wrestling League. ATD tired of Oelgi's lackluster efforts in their tag matches. Foreign Glory. Not stringing together many wins in the Let's Cross the Wrestling League as a team. Had a huge argument at the end of the last uh, end of last week when OLG didn't seem to even try to break a pin on KTD. KTD's fed up. KTD's had enough, and she's demanded this match against her. I mean, as far as I know, they're still tag team. They're still foreign glory. They're still tag team partners. Well, G's music, apparently forgotten by Homeless Joe. As is what it is. But these two partners are going to settle it as they know how. A fight in Russian and a fight in Irish. They're going to fight it out, resolve their differences, or, again, this could be the beginning of the end for Foreign Glory. Either a competitor able to capture any kind of gold. Uh, well, G had a chance to uh, win from from uh, Baza, but was unable to win the United States Champion. Yep. Uh, KCD has been in some title matches herself, including world title matches. And they 
certainly have not had much success as a tag team. They've been frustrated with each other every week. And those tensions just boiled over from last week. And here we go. Now we have a match. Depending on how this goes, there might be many more. And the crowd's going to be fucking silent. God damn it. We are off. Both competitors wrapping up here. OLG pushing KGD to the corner. Referee getting in to break it up. And it is a clean break. It is a clean break. I still got to think, even though these wrestlers are having their differences, they still respect each other as, as competitors and as teammates. I mean, they've started this match out with some chain wrestling. They're not throwing punches or helmet headbutts. There was a clean break. KD hitting a Famouser, actually, all of a sudden. Turning the Welgy around now. Welgy has the weight advantage. KD has the speed advantage. Be that as it may, both of these wrestlers, as tag team partners, and I'm sure training partners... Oh, missed a, a big boot there. And his training partners know each other's moves. They know uh, what to expect. Though it seems like KD's done her homework quite a bit better than a Welgy. And again, OLG reversing KTD down to the mat. OLG going for the leg, but KTD kicking his leg. Both both competitors reversing. Getting a little bit of offense each. It's been a very even match so far. The reversal by KTD. It's almost sad to see uh, a tag team fighting amongst themselves. But it's bound to happen, especially, you know, the frust like I said, you get frustrated losing so often. I'm surprised there hasn't been a match between Nil and Draz, honestly. I think that's just because that's an employer-employee relationship. Draz is picking up a paycheck, and Nil just cares about his face. Uh, meanwhile, these two competitors are very competitive, and uh, they want to win. And when HD says, hey, jackass, I mean, this is in Russian, by the way, but hey, basically, hey, jackass. Uh oh there's a shove! Uh-oh. And a kick almost to the dick. I think I think these two have stopped playing nice. Yeah, another kick to the stomach. And oh, try to get a punch there. Another kick back. For, yeah, they're starting to fight now. Fuck the chain wrestling. Fuck the respect for each other. This has turned into a fight anyway, as I was saying. KTD, Russian leg sweep. KTD accusing Owelji of not putting forth his best effort. Owelji taking exception to that. Saying the KTD just shouldn't get pinned so fucking often. And here we go. Now, like I said, we're starting to see an actual fight here. Punches and kicks thrown. And another Famouser by KTD. KTD again has the speed advantage. One, two, only a two count. The beginning of the match. Well, not beginning, but first, uh, first pin attempt, I should say. HD, very agile, very spry. Able to able to get behind a Welgy there and hit him with a modified bulldog of sorts. And uh oh, going for that DDT again, hits it. I think I think KTD has definitely taken over this match. And we've seen it many times before. That's what's interesting about this match. Both of these wrestlers seem to uh, put forth a pretty good effort in singles competition, but usually can't quite get it done. Where they'll control a match for some time and just doesn't uh, doesn't always win. And uh oh, we got a tarantula. Of course, OLG. Even if he wanted to give up, it wouldn't matter. That is not a legal move for a submission. And HD has to, as she did, break it for a five count. Oh, OLG, wow, throwing KTD into the corner and now going for the knee. HD reversing with an elbow there and now OLG uh oh going for that weird oh that weird very brutal looking neck breaker oh shit could be into the beginning of the end here for KTD OLG stringing together quite a few offensive moves here oh what a backbreaker KTD down and out at the moment. KTD, though, has not thrown her helmet around this match. I don't think she's done any headbutts with that helmet. 
um, to OLG yet, possibly again, because they are still tag team partners. And I, and I gotta think deep down, they still respect each other. There's a reason they teamed up to begin with, not just because they were two of the only non-Americans in the Let's Cross Wrestling League, with the exception of uh, Brute Force, who was Canadian, actually. Oddly enough. Um, and now KTD hitting another Russian leg sweep. But does not stay on top for very long. OLG now controlling the match. And these matches tend to go back and forth. And I, I really, I can't hazard a guess who's going to win this. Because, again, both wrestlers seem to choke at the end. Of a lot of their singles competition. And I don't know if they can both double choke. I don't know how that would even work. Maybe they both just knock each other out and one just happens to fall on the other one. I, I don't know how this is going to end. I don't know how this could end. All I know is a Welgy going for a super back body drop from the top rope. Shadow Deer nearly folded KGD in half. Welgy hurting his own back there, but going for a pin, this could be it. One, two, no, KGD able to kick out. The audience doing their weird thing where they're very active but silent. Alabama Slam by uh, OLG onto KTD. Now going after the arm here. KTD in, uh, already in no man's land. Not the pay-per-view though. As KTD is tossed over and kicked in the back of the head. OLG not taking any prisoners and showing no mercy to his tag team partner. Though so KTD fighting back and OLG reversing, able to get out of it here. Looks like taking KTD over to the ropes. Match actually going a lot longer than I thought it would. Both of these competitors, see, neither one of them has really tried to, uh, you know, there's been a pin here and there, but I think both wrestlers actually want to hurt each other. I gotta say, this is probably the end for Foreign Glory. As they brawl on the outside, this is no longer a wrestling match. This is a straight-up fight. Between OLG and KTD. OLG. Oh, no. Go! Oh, actually gets DDT'd. There's no protection there. That was straight on the concrete. I mean, that's like very. a little bit of carpeting there, but other than that, it's just fucking concrete. And OLG hit his big old potato head right against it from a DDT by KTD. KTD gets back in the ring. OLG follows suit. We'll stare at each other for a second. And uh, OLG was actually able to grab KTD. Going for a suplex, but KTD throwing a knee into that potato head. Oh, went for something, but a Welgy powered out of it, grabbing KTD, pulling her towards the center of the ring. Then here with a snap mirror and then a big boot to the helmet. And then goes for a pin. One, and a two, and a no. Not three. Both competitors look like they're a bit winded by now. They both had a really good match. No, uh oh, the Irish dip drop luck of dip drops. There it is! That could be it! KTD could be done for. I. Well, G not going for a pin right away could cost him here. Yeah, KTD able to kick out. KTD has not hit one of her patented Urn Kanranas just yet. So I gotta think one's coming soon if she can muster one. And uh oh, this might be a fall away slam! Yes, it is. KTD, I don't know that KTD's really got anything left in her. And uh oh. OLG might be setting it up. Oh, what a knee! The knee of the Irish, that could be it. Helmet or not, that's a powerful knee that KTD just took to the chin. There's the pin, one, and a two, and no, KTD kicks out! OLG can't believe it. OLG can't fucking believe it, and now is, uh, Signaling for something here. The, the crowd looks like they should be making sounds and are not. KG taking some armpits there. And it looks like a another tilt-a-whirl slam. KGD looks out of it. Uh-oh. Might be going for another Irish drop. Yep. And there it is. Well, G dragging KGD back to the middle of the ring here. Goes for a pin. One. Two. No, KTD kicking out again. Holy shit. 
Holy shit! JGD will not stay down. OLG trying his best to keep KTD down. Oh, is he going for it again? I don't know if he's going for it again, but uh, KTD reverses out of it. Uh-oh, KTD's setting up OLG for that Hern Canrana. He's about to get a face full of rush, Russian crotch. Just for a second, though, as he goes down to the mat. That could be it. OLG looks like he's out of it. KTD pulling him away from the ropes, so that could be enough time for OLG to recuperate here. One, two... Oh, I thought that was actually going to be it. I was going to be very surprised, too, since KTD has not had any offense. Uh, for several minutes now. The KTD now back on it. OLG, a little dazed after that Hurricane Rana. And now KTD doing some sort of taunt. I'm not sure what that's about. Eyeballing OLG, turning OLG around. Spins around and slams him down with a death drop of sorts. OLG now at the mercy of KTD. KTD looks like going around to pick up OLG, but OLG reverses and punches her right in the stomach. Uh-oh. Might be going for the potato's edge. Here we go. Oh, and he hits it. That's got to be it. That's got to be it, but he's got to get KTD away from those ropes. Might be what KTD needs for a little bit of a recoup, but let's see. One, two... Oh, yeah, that was enough. KTD kicks out. How the shit is this match going to end? OLG has done everything he can to keep KTD down. He has been commanding most of this match, hitting KTD with several signatures, several finisher moves, and KTD refuses to stay down. He's got to be frustrated. He's got to be thinking, how am I going to how am I going to keep this broad down and Maybe another back body drop from the top rope will be enough, and he folds KTD over again. And I can imagine must be gonna go for a pin here. Must be gonna go for a pin here. Uh, no, actually going to the middle rope here. Might be going for a big split. Oh, he misses it though. And KTD slaps him, says, how dare you? Here's a hurricane rata, motherfucker. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that could be the sequence that ends it. KTD pulls over the big pale man. Goes for a pin. One, two, no. Well, G kicks out. Holy shit. And a well, G. It's here with another Hurricane Rana. That could be it. KTD going for a quick pin. One, two, three. It's over. KTD wins. How the fuck did she pull that off? A well, G had her dead to rights. Oh, well, she had this one. Time and time again, he threw everything that he could at KTD, and none of it was enough. And I've got to say that this has to be the end of Foreign Glory after a match like this. But I don't know. Who knows? The Cold War seems to be over, and it looks like Russian came out ahead this time. There it was right there at the beginning of the end. Thanks, asshole, with your fucking sign. God damn it, this dickhead with his fucking sign. Fucking ruins everything. Made it so we couldn't see the slap, the, 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 the slap of Putin. And the first Hurin Kanrana that uh, OLG kicked out of, but the second one right there was too much to handle. And KTD gets the pin, gets the win, and it's proven that OLG is the deadbeat of Foreign Glory. Now, despite both uh, of our top two champions, Baz and Brute Force, the US champion and the Let's Cross the Wrestling League world champion, respectively. Uh, even though they're both champions and they're both fighting, this is a non-title match. This is not a title for title match or anything like that. This is more of a match of curiosity. Baza and Brute Force have never fought in the ring. Baza has taken down every super heavyweight in the Let's Cross the Wrestling League, especially the ones that have come for that title. 
and uh, I think everyone's just interested to see if he could take out brute force as well. I mean, again, this is not for any kind of a title. Baza and brute force both both fear no man or woman in that case. You have a female competitor in Let's Cause Wrestling League. And who knows, when Baza isn't defending that title, he seems to be more likely to lose. So had this been a US title match, maybe Baza would actually have an edge. I don't know, again, if that just changes his demeanor in going into a match, but. Like I said, this is the last giant on his list to tick off as the giant slayer of the Let's Crosby Wrestling League. And I'm gonna guess that his pyro is not gonna work. I'm gonna guess that it's bum, yeah, it's I mean, that. That happens. <clears throat> that happens. And Baza has beaten a bigger man in Skyrim jobs. So, Rufors is not the biggest man that, that, that uh, Baza has had to fight. But he might still be one of the toughest. I mean, definitely one of the toughest. I, I mean, I'm not going to get into a pissing contest between... Who's tougher, Skyrim Jobs or Brute Force? Because that's a pissing contest that I can't win. Wow, Brute Force is getting right back up after all, after those punches. But Baza throwing the punches still. And actually knocking down the big man. Looks like Baza here and is, is here and he's very serious. Hits a excellent suplex on uh, Brute Force. Brute Force laid up in the corner here. It takes a snake eyes uh, of sorts. Not really a snake eyes, but either way. But, oh, he's not held down for very long as he's able to back body drop. Back body drop. Body drop. Have I been calling the back body drop the wrong fucking thing? I have no idea anymore. Anyway, rushes leg sweep by Baza to brute force. Baza turning brute force over here. And turning him back over again, which was a mistake, as Brute Force was ready to kick him in the face with his boot. And... Oh, went for a... Uh, was gonna go for a uh, backbreaker there, but took a knee to the face instead. Baz is, is shown very resourceful, very quick, very skill... Oh, wow, what a fucking neckbreaker there. Of sorts. Um, very skilled in this match. Against Brute Force, and uh-oh. Brute Force saying, no, don't do it, and... Wasn't a kick to the dick. That was a kick to the to the to the midsection there. Totally legal. Baz is not a dirty fighter. He's he's really not. I don't think Brute Force is that dirty of a fighter either. I, I can't remember what the things that Brute Force has done, but but I try not to question them because he's very scary and he has a uh, old style hockey goalie mask on. So what are you gonna do? Brute Force reversing, showing some skill of his own, and hitting a neckbreaker on Baza. Now a big ham hock of a punch. Again, Baza is no small man. I think he's at least 6'3", possibly 6'5". I can't remember exactly how tall Baza is. Um, but Baza's not a small man, but still dwarfed by the second largest man in the Let's Crossy Wrestling League. Still tied for height with Skyrim Jobs, but Skyrim Jobs definitely has a bit more muscle mass. And he is been, he's been tested. Skyrim Jobs is tested every week for PEDs. Performance enhancement drugs. And he's been clean every time. All the wrestlers are constantly tested. Every fucking, every fucking event that they're in, they have to be tested. We have a really good lab. I mean, that's where we spend all of our money is the fucking testing lab. We turn that, we turn those things right. Oh my god! There's that fucking clothesline. That could already be it. That could be over. One, two, no, no. Baza kicks out at two. Oh, goes for a second clothesline there. Only gets a piece of it. Ended up being more of a slap. But uh, Baza doesn't stay down for long. Is able to reverse out of it and grab uh, Brute Force, throwing him into the corner. Maybe he set, oh, he set him up for a big splash. Actually goes for a pin off of that. I, don't, I can't imagine that's going to be enough, though, to keep down Brute Force. No, only a two count. Only a two count. Force turned around here by uh, Baza. Baza throwing a big punch to the back. 
Another kick to the back. Lifts up brute force. Uh oh, turns him around. Oh, I thought he was gonna go for the death drop there, but no. It, no, just a really nice German suplex. And I think bat, I think Brute Force might have hit his neck on something. He's holding his neck. I'm not sure what he hit his neck on, though. I don't know if he hit it on the rope or something. I'm trying to watch the delayed uh, replay here. See what he hit his neck on. And, uh, I don't know. I think he just got folded over. Anyway, Brute Force oh, went for that clothesline again, unable to connect. And Bazit not allowing Brute Force to hit him with a... Uh, even get him up for a... Uh, anything. And uh-oh! He's doing the squats! The power that this man has in his arms and his legs and everything else is always impressing. Squatting. Now I think at least squatting every fucking big man in the Let's Cross the Wrestling League. And the path of slam! That could be it. Goes for the pin. Referee. One. Two. No, Baza. Not able to get the win just yet. Move force though is dazed. Gets a, uh, tries to get a punch and is unable to, and wow, Baza just lifting Brute Force up and dropping him. I can't believe how strong Baza is. It's absolutely ridiculous. And we test him, too. We test Baza, too. By the way, he's, uh, he's not on any drugs. Here goes the death drop. Oh, that could be it. He could have just slayed all the giants in the Let's Cross Wrestling League. He needs to make a pin, though. One. Two! No, Baza! Unable. Brute Force kicking out just in the nick of time. Baza frustrated, punches Brute Force in the face, or at least in the mask. Now trying to get that, hurt that arm. I don't know that he does anything with that arm, but whatever. He's trying everything. And you got it when you go against someone like Brute Force, and Brute Force now grabbing Baza. Rolling Baz into the corner here. Tried to hit a uh, something there, but was unable to connect. And is instead paying for it with a uh, neck breaker. Baz going for a quick pin here. One, two, no. Neck breaker is not going to be able to keep down brute force. And neither is this move, as is probably the lowest successful move in the Let's Crosby Wrestling League. All the wrestlers seem to try to do it. Very, very rarely is it successful. Baza might be going for another Jerberson. No, going for the knee. Now, this is smart. You take out the legs, you take out half of the man. And another Baza slam right in the center of the ring. He needs to go for a pin, though. He's tired. One, two. Oh, I thought that was going to be it. Rufor's kicking out yet again. Baz has got to be frustrated now. He doesn't know what it's going to take. It. Oh, he gets, takes a punch to the stomach. And uh-oh. Darkest of days for Baza. Brute Force hits all of it. Brute Force goes for the pin. Referee gets in position. One. Two. Oh. Despite all the time it took to make that pin, I thought that could have been it. It was not. Brute Force actually getting frustrated. And trust me, if people you don't want frustrated, it's Brute Force. And uh-oh. Setting him up. Might be going for... Oh, no. Baza able to reverse out of whatever it was. Might be going for a suplex here. Picks him up and hits him with it. Rolls over for the pin. Where's the referee? Got a two count. Referee again, not in position. We don't have very good refs here. I got to say another Baza slam. Holy shit, how many? Referee getting in position. One, two... Three, that's it, Baza has slain every giant that there is to offer in the Let's Crosby Wrestling League. Baza with his Baza slam, he hit it multiple times on Brute Force and he needed to. Brute Force is no easy man to beat. He's no easy man to keep down. Baza showed that. And he showed exactly how many times it took before Brute Force stayed down. And to Baz's credit, on the other end of it, he took a clothesline straight from the seventh layer of hell, as well as a, uh, as well as the darkest of days, and was uh, still able to 
kick out and keep it going. Here it was, that last Baza slam that did it. Got the pin. Referees took a while to get over there, but it was it was still good enough. Baza wins it, and he is definitely the giant slayer of the Let's Crosby Wrestling League. And now coming out to the ring, he is the challenger. He is one member of the Circle of Pain. So that circle only consists of two men, and one has already lost tonight. Raven hopes to recapture some form of gold, and in this case, the form of the Hardcore Championship. Raven and Cad have met on numerous occasions in the ring. I think both, both men hold a win over each other. Um, but none of them have been for a title. Cad winning the Hardcore title last week from Skyrim Jobs. But as the Hardcore title is, it is defended every week. And so there is no rest for the champion. There is no advantage for the champion. As every match is some form of a Hardcore, no rules, special manip Basically, there are no disqualifications in any Hardcore title match. There's different stipulations on how it must be won. In this case, it's just pinfalls or submissions anywhere in the in the planet. Doesn't have to take place in that ring. Add won one of those before against this man's partner, Brute Force. He hopes to uh, hold on to that title a little bit longer than the last hardcore champion. We'll have to see. And now coming down to the ring, he is the hardcore champion. And he's actually coming from the crowd. He's not coming down the ramp with all of his explosions. Maybe he's gotten over his explosions. He's got something fancy enough right there on his waist. He is Cad, and he is the hardcore champion. And he looks drunk. Oh, shit. That's not good. Well, you know how it is, I suppose. He also might be tired from celebrating with the other Iron Dogs earlier. I don't know. Yeah, I think he's drunk. I think he's fucking drunk. Drunk or not, though, he has to defend that hardcore championship. And he's going to do it tonight against Draven. Pins, submissions, they all count anywhere in the building. Actually, anywhere on Earth. There it is. That's what it's for. That hardcore championship. Cad hopes to retain. Draven hopes to capture gold once again. And uh, Cad has a BAC of uh, 0.09. Cad, though, kicking Draven right in the stomach right away. Looks like they're going to go for some uh, chain wrestling, actually, in a hardcore match, oddly enough. Again, it's like I said, it's pinfalls anywhere, and weapons are perfectly legal. There are no countouts. There are no disqualifications. Therefore, there is no uh, championship uh, advantage. Cad on top right now, but we've seen... Oh, wow! Missing. Well, that's what booze will do to you. Completely misses that. I said he was on top, but we've seen it change in many matches tonight. And Cad actually hitting a nice big boot. Putting uh, Draven right back down onto the mat, but Draven... Big... Uh, boot of his own, but now Cad, both these men trading kicks to the face. Cad going for a uh, neck breaker there, but unable to get all of it. And Draven now saying that this match will go outside of the ring. And like I said, there is no incentive to bring it back in. The referee has to follow. Oh, and it looked like Draven actually was going to reverse uh, there, but Cad reversed the reversal and got a uh, clothesline there. Trying to wrench the neck of Draven, but Draven able to fight out of it, punching Cad in the ribs. And now Draven hitting that clothesline this time, and he flicks himself in the head a couple times for some weird reason. Draven now going for a weapon, perfectly legal in a, a hardcore match. Gets a kendo stick, but Cad grabs Draven. Oh, and hits him! But that, uh, see what he now grabs the kendo stick. It's on Cad. Cad. Oh, whoa. no, he missed. He missed. He didn't hit Draven with it. Went to hit Cow, oh, and now Cad gets hit with it. Cad gets hit with a kendo stick. Oh, no, Cad rolls out of the way and is able to get the kendo stick away from Draven. Draven takes it from Cad, hits him in the stomach again. 
Misses against the back. Alba hits him right in the right around the chest or so, knocking Cad to the ground. Again, perfectly legal in this match. All weapons all the time. All hardcore for the hardcore title. Didn't even look like he was setting something up there, but I'm not sure what Cab is doing. He's running in place. Didn't quite work. And takes a knee to the face for his weird behavior. Again, Cad is likely very drunk. Raven hitting that double underhook. Pile driver on the outside. Could have possibly ended the match right there, but continues to uh, fight with Cad. Cad has shown resiliency in matches before. And he's going to have to show a lot more resiliency and a lot more uh, effort if he plans to hold on to that hardcore championship here. Raven in very firm control of this match, but Cat able to reverse it to a Russian leg sweep. Cat actually goes for the first pin here. Does not even get a one count, though. Draven kicking out almost immediately. Cat wrenching that neck again. Did not work for him last time, but not going to work for him this time either. As uh, Draven's able to power out of it, grabs Cad, forces him down, and wrenches the knee, dropping all of his weight down upon it. Now he's going for a pin. One, two, actually a two count already, so that already shows you Draven's definitely been uh, doing a lot more damage than Cad this match. Now going for another pin. One, two, no, oh, not able. Draven desperately wants to recapture some goal. Oh, Cad's already up. Cad's already up, but he, he seemed to hit that kick, but Draven didn't even react to it. Draven, uh, yeah, Draven's just gonna go for a pin for every fucking move he does, I think, at this point. He, like I said, he desperately wants to win gold again. And Cad not even given any kind of a uh, reprieve here, but takes one anyway. Is able to get uh, rid of Draven for a second, grabs that kendo stick, misses with it. And uh, Dra Draven does a flying punch uh, as a result. Fuck me. Grabs Cad. Lifts Cad up, slams him down. Oh, going for a um, Anaconda Vice here, I believe. Cad could be the first man to tap out. No, does not tap out. I thought he did there for a second. He kicks Draven in the back of the head, but Draven not, uh, not going to go down that easily. Hits Cad with a... Uh, yeah, I think Cad's done this match. Yeah, this is going to be it right here, Draven. Setting Cad up for uh, something. Maybe next time, Cad, you shouldn't come drunk. Oh, here it is. Yeah! Cad's busted open. That's it. Count it, ref. One, two, and three. No! Cad kicks out somehow. But I can't imagine he's going to be in this match much longer. He's drunk and bloody. Cat Draven just pinning him right again. One, two, no, Cat kicking out again. I don't think Cat has mounted any offense really since they've uh, got to the outside. Cat went for a super kick there, but was unable to connect as Draven punched him in the face. And now Draven slams him to the, to, to the ground again. Draven decides to get into the ring for some reason. Uh oh. What is Draven going for here? Uh, oh no, is he doing this weird thing where he gets up in the corner? Well, he did for a second. Now he's just staring at Cat. There are no count outs or anything. So all Draven's doing is letting Cad recuperate here. Referee can't do anything about it. Not sure what Draven's going for, but Cad follows Draven back into the ring. Look at this match. He's going back to the ring. Cad punching Draven in the face. But you can see how tired Cad is already. I mean, I don't know that he's going to get much offense here. He punches Draven, though, in the back of the head. It looks like he's... Oh, he goes for a big knee to the face here. And gets back in the ring. Cad, uh-oh, going for a sharpshooter. So I don't think Draven's going to tap out. Draven can be near the ropes all he wants. It does not matter. Uh, in a falls submissions count anywhere match, there is no rope break. Yeah, going for a pin after that, but I don't think it's going to... I don't think you're going to win after just pinning someone after a fucking uh, sharpshooter. Now Cat, very slow to get up. He is hurting bad. Draven still looks relatively fresh in comparison to Cat. Oh, Cat rolling over the top of Draven here. And Draven grabbing a sledgehammer, but Cat able to get it away from him. That sledgehammer actually coming in handy for him last week against Skyrim Jobs, but I don't know that Cat wants anything to do with it. Draven's arms, hands, whatever. Uh. Cat getting back into the ring. 
And uh, throws, uh, looks like throws Draven in the corner here. I don't know what he's going to go for. Turns Draven around. Kicks Draven in the stomach. Headbutts him. Gives him a punch. Oh, he might be going for that running drop kick here. Yep, it looks like he is. He's got Draven set up and nails it. Problem with that move is it takes time to get back into the ring to make a pin. And I don't know that's going to be enough to take Draven out. One, two. No, Draven kicks out. Not enough to, to finish it yet. Dad, probably thinking if he can, all the blood gushing out of his head, thinking what he has to do to end this. Oh, what a vicious fucking move. Drops Draven on his head. Actually taunts Draven a little bit, which probably was not the smartest move. And, oh, he does a uh, spin kick to Draven, throws him to the ropes. It's one leg drop, two leg drops. Draven goes for a clothesline, but no, Cat able to reverse it into a neck breaker. We've seen this before. Cat lifts Draven up, might be going for a super kick. He hits it! And I think that super kick busted Draven open. He goes for a pin. One, two. No, Draven kicks out. Cad can't believe it. He thought he had it there. He thought he had it there. But both men are busted and bleeding. Cad rolling out of the ring, possibly getting a weapon now. After that, after a super kick not ending this match, and Cad grabs a ladder. Interesting choice. He sets it up and uh, gets taken down by Draven. I don't know what Cad was thinking about a ladder and setting it up, but obviously it did not work. And now, uh oh, triangle hold. This could be it. Cad could tap out. Referee asking if he wants to give up, and he says no. And he actually able, is able to reverse out of it. He lifts Draven up and. Draven's immediately able to grab him and throws Cat into the corner here, punches Cat alongside the head and uh, wrenches that arm, goes for a pin. I mean, hell, it could be it. Who knows at this point? No, oh, and able to kick out. And like I said, Draven going for a pin any chance he gets. He wants that gold back or any gold back. And uh oh, I think Cat's going for it. He hits the go to sleep. Draven could be out. Cad quickly rolling over for a pin. One, two. No, Draven kicks out. Cad is understandably frustrated. He thought that was it. I thought that was it. Draven showing that he's got a lot of fortitude and that he wants this title. Cad kicking Draven a couple times here and hits it in Zaguri. We're fighting awfully close to that announce table. And now Cad hitting the mounted punches, trying to open up that wound even more on Draven. And I think he did. Cad grabbing a nearby steel chair now and throws it down and then goes for a pin. I don't know what the logic was there, but uh, he's got at least a two count out of it. So, you know, he was two thirds of the way there with throwing a chair down in anger. Maybe that's what it was. I mean, he might be frustrated still from not winning yet. And Cat, whoop. So what that uh, cat hitting a force field or something? I'm not sure. But then kicking Draven in the stomach and hitting another Enziguri, forcing Draven back down to the uh, back down to the ground. And actually, he's going for a pin here. He's had enough. He wants this over with. He wants to keep the title. Only gets a two count though. Draven able to kick out. Draven getting to his feet first. And looks like oh, it looked like he was gonna slam Cad down, but Cad able to get out of it. Tosses Draven over his shoulder there. And is going to go for the ladder again. I'm not sure why. And uh-oh. Oh, he hits Draven right across the sternum with that ladder. Oh, he misses against the back, though. And Draven wrestling that ladder away from Cad. And hitting Cad right square between the eyes with that ladder. And now hits the ankle. I mean, if Cad can't uh, stand, he can't do a super kick. That's for sure. Cad looks like he's out though, and uh-oh, this could be it, this is it. Draven's setting Cad up, this has got to be it. There he goes, he's gonna go for it again. Oh, not on the ladder! Oh, wow, right, almost on that ladder, that's gotta be it though. That has gotta be it. Draven, he needs the pin, he's fucking taunting Cad, he needs to go for a pin. I got this gotta be it, one, two, and three. We have a new, no! How does Cad kick out of that? By all means, this match should be over. 
And somehow kicking out. Grabs Draven for a belly to belly suplex, but unable to actually capitalize. And Draven able to uh, reverse out of it. But Cad 2 able to reverse and throws a strong shoulder into Draven. This is possibly the most hard. Oh, it's super kick! I was gonna say, this is possibly the most hardcore, hardcore match we've had so far. One, two. No, Draven kicks out again. Holy shit. How is this going to end and is it going to end? Uh oh, he's going for the go to sleep. And he hits it. That could be it. Draven's got blood all over his shirt, all over his face. The referee's out of position. One or two. I don't know what it was. I couldn't see the fucking ref, but either way, Draven kicked out. Cad can't believe it. Draven is as bloody as they come right now. His head gushing blood. Cad going for another pin. Refusing to believe that it's not over, but it isn't. I don't know what it's going to take. I, I got to say, whoever hits the finisher or something next, whoever hits their next big move has got to win this. And I think it's going to be Draven here. He's wrenching the arm, but no, Cad reversing out of it. Hits a clothesline very quickly. Going for another pin very quickly. One, two. No, of course that's not going to be it. Draven kicks out yet again. Fuck me. Who's going to win this? Oh, Draven hitting a DDT. Draven lifts Cad back up. Goes for a, a big, strong fucking punch, but does not take Cad down. Goes for another punch. Cad, oh, took three punches there. And now a kick to the back of the head. But Cad getting up. Hits Draven with a hurricane run out of nowhere. Picks Draven back up. Kicks Draven in the stomach. What's he going for? Oh, the other toss here. Oh, Draven. That's got to hurt. Most of this match has been taking place on the outside of the ring, as, as predicted. Cad throwing in some kicks here to both Draven's legs, and now a knee to the face. Probably continuing to open up that wound that Draven has. Now going for another pin. One, two. No, not enough. This match certainly has been much better, much more tense. Much more hardcore than the last hardcore championship match we had here last week. And another super kick. I don't think he hit all of it, though, but he might have hit enough of it. He goes for a pin. One, two. No. What's it going to take? What's it going to fucking take? Draven will not stay down. Draven will not stay the fuck down. And Cat, oh, goes for the knee. Itanya hardening the shit out of him. One, two. Nope. Nope, that's not going to take it. Oh my god. Cad, he's spending too much time being frustrated. Draven able to get back up, but Draven getting kicked in the stomach. Now Cad going for a spinning neck breaker onto the kendo stick. Holy shit. One, two. No, not enough though. Not enough to keep Draven down. He hit his head right against that kendo stick. It was not enough. Draven now getting the first kick in. Smacking Cad in the back of the head, showing a sign of disrespect here. If anything, both men should respect each other for the, the amount of hell they've put each other through in this match. Both uh, trading reversals. And now Cad thrown back into the ring by Draven. Draven going for a punch and kick. Cad got wrapped up in those uh, ropes a little bit there. Draven taunting now. Uh-oh, he might be ready to do a sequence here. Hits the first clothesline. He hits the second clothesline. And a super kick. Cad could be out. Draven should go for a pin here, but he doesn't. Cad kicks the knee out from Draven. Grabs Draven. Going for here, possibly a suplex. Oh, no. Oh, he's like a suplex into a neck breaker. Rolls over for the pin. The referee, come on. One, two. Oh, Draven kicks out. Fuck me, silly. Fuck me, sideways. Fuck me. So many ways. I have no idea how this match is going to end. Or if it's going to end. Oh, Draven hitting a big slam on Cad. I'm not sure what Cad was going for, but it was not good enough. And now Draven, uh-oh, going up to that top, that middle rope here. Oh, no. This has hurt Draven in the past. He's doing that weird thing where he goes up to the middle rope and stares down at his opponent. Oh, but he hits him. He hits Cad with the uh, big splash, so it paid off that time. Uh-oh. 
And refusion. Oh, God. That's got to be it. That's got to be it. That's like the fourth or fifth one he did to Cad. One, two, and three. That's it. Draven is your new hardcore champion after one of the most bloody, brutal matches I've seen in Let's Crosby Wrestling League. In this replay, for some reason, Dra Dra Draven's handkerchief is possessed. I'm not sure what's going on, and that that's really weird. Both men. What the fuck is going on with that handkerchief in this fucking replay? What the fuck is going on? I think I think uh, Draven had help from the dark side or something. Something's clearly holding onto that handkerchief in these replays. Anyway, Cad threw all he had at Draven. He, uh... That fucking handkerchief's doing weird shit, guys. And that splash actually finally worked for Draven. And again, in the replays, for some reason, there's no blood. I don't know why. Both men fought hard. And Draven's gonna have to uh, defend that title next week against Hood Fabulous. Cad will continue to go back into the realm of obscurity. Draven is your new hardcore champion. He's captured gold once again. He's held two different titles here in the Let's Crossy Wrestling League. He deserved it this match. And we'll see you guys next week on Friday night.